Oh, hi. How do you like my armor of mesmerization? You know what? On second thought, shit's too fabulous for me. Well, there we go. Needed more edge. Alright, since a lot of folks like my recent video on what kinds of magic enchantments would be most useful for weapons if magic was real, why not do the same thing for armor? So there's a few obvious ones, kind of no-brainers, like weight reduction, for example, and increase in hardness and toughness to make the armor more effective. Uh, weight reduction would be pretty obviously handy, that would allow you to wear thicker steel plate that offers more protection without, you know, it wearing you down and exhausting you the same way normally. What the only limiting factor would be uh, you can only make the plates so thick before they limit mobility substantially. If it gets too thick then it won't articulate as well and uh, like for example a, a gauntlet if you make this ex extremely thick then you wouldn't have the kind of flexibility. You know, Even a mitten gauntlet like this is actually reasonably flexible and mobile, but of course if you have lots of thick overlapping plates and that can cause problems, can cause the armor to bind up, things like that. Another obvious thing is if you had to deal with magic weapons, you would want some sort of elemental resistance, for example. Like if somebody comes at you with a fire sword or ice sword or whatever else, you want your armor to be able to deal with that. Also climate control would be very helpful. You know, just even though it's not a particularly hot day today, just standing here surrounded by video lights in this makes me sweat my nads off. So it would be really nice to have some sort of cooling, particularly under padded armor, it gets really hot. Also in plate armor, you know, in winter, the metal gets very, very cold. So you would have to deal with that. That's one of the main issues that Crusaders had to deal with in the desert. You know, suffering from heat exhaustion and uh, that sort of thing. So climate control, definitely temperature control, would be not just comfortable but also enhance your chances of surviving. Okay, what else is there? What about invisibility? If your opponent cannot see your armor, that's a potential advantage, at least until the first one or two hits when they realize something fishy is going on. But um, invisible weapons could be useful, but they could also uh, hinder you, because it, it is useful for the user to see the weapon as well. Of course you feel it, but being able to see it where it is in relation to the opponent's weapon is somewhat helpful. Like it's probably not a big deal if you had an invisible weapon, but it's, you know, it has some drawbacks. Invisible armor on the other hand, who cares? The wearer would not be affected negatively in any way, but it would be a good surprise, so to speak, for the opponent. And of course an invisible shield would be very useful. Now you would have to practice with it a lot to be familiar enough with it to know exactly where it is, how much of you it covers, because again you can't see it, which is a bit of a drawback. But the good thing is it wouldn't have a lot of the disadvantages that a standard shield has. Like if you cover your head, you can't see anything. So that's a typical thing, a way to, to feint out the uh, shield user is start a high cut as soon as they raise up to protect their head, you strike down to the leg. So I think the best solution here would be if the rim of the shield was visible, but the rest wasn't. Another useful magic enchantment would be one that allows the material to harden as it's being struck. And this could also be a high-tech solution rather than magic. In fact, we already have something similar to that. There's something called a shear thickening fluid, an experimental material for armor, also referred to as liquid armor. So that is a liquid that solidifies when there is mechanical stress or shear. So you would be able to move perfectly well in it because it is a liquid, it's perfectly flexible, but as soon as something strikes it, then it would harden into a solid. There are also other materials that become thicker or harder when, for example, an electrical charge is being applied, and that could be quite handy. Imagine you have a full suit of plate armor, 
uh, of whatever material really. It could even be something like leather or cloth even uh, because of the hardening effect. And uh, if you had a way to lock it in place, that would be handy, for example, for a lance charge. Um, you have, in historical times, you have armor with lance rests that are designed to distribute the force into the armor so that you don't just have to withstand the force of the impact with just your arm, because that, that can throw it back, that can you know, cause injury, worst case scenario, or otherwise just not be as effective because it wouldn't transfer as much force into the target. Now, if you could lock that and you were you did a thrust be it with a sword or a lance or something you it would, everything would be supported by the structure you would have your entire body weight behind it without the arm collapsing and uh, it could also be used defensively like for example if you parry an opponent's strike and you solidify the entire armor and, and lock your arm into place basically then even if the opponent is a lot stronger they wouldn't be able to break you your defense. You would be able to statically block you know, and, and compensate for any difference in strength because everything forms one solid structure. I could also imagine this being very useful for a neck guard and helmet because one of the common problems is a helmet protects the skull from fractures but it does not protect you against concussions. If your head violently snaps back that can cause a concussion, can knock you out, can take you out of the fight and leave you vulnerable to the opponent but uh, if, as soon as there is a certain amount of force pushing you back, if your gorget locked in place and kept your head stable so that your entire body rocks back rather than just your head being thrown back, that would be very useful. Another good enchantment I could think of is strong magnetic repulsion. So if an opponent swings a steel sword or axe or something at you, you could violently repulse the opponent's weapon away from you that way you're safe and the opponent is thrown off balance. Now you would probably want this on a non-ferrous breastplate and helmet. Uh, probably not on a helmet at all, in fact. Because the problem is if, say, an opponent swings a relatively heavy weapon at you, like a polearm, and the polearm has similar mass to the helmet, then, you know, the repulsion would go equal force in both directions and it would throw your head back, which as I mentioned before is a problem because of concussions and the like. And uh, it would also be really bad if you had a ferrous breastplate and helmet, for example, and turned that on and the two would violently repulse one another. You can imagine what that would do to your neck and your head. Not pleasant. And if you want to be really fabulous, what about a sparkle helmet? How about we call it a flashbang helmet? So essentially a visored helmet that emits very strong light. Maybe even some kind of strobe light that really messes with the opponent, blinds them, makes them unable to see you, and your visor protects you from the effect. And then the opponent would have to have a really cool sunshade helmet, I guess. Another thing I can imagine would be kinetic energy absorption. Imagine in your breastplate you could absorb and store the kinetic energy that an opponent puts in. So they strike you and nothing happens other than they charge up the breastplate or ideally an entire suit of armor. Because if you had an entire suit that's all connected and you could redirect the kinetic energy any way you want and then um, expel it basically, just imagine you absorb like 10 sword hits from your opponent and then you just punch them <laughs> and release all of that kinetic energy into your gauntlet. That sounds pretty destructive. Now, it could break your arm in the process, who knows, but maybe if you combine that with um, other protective enchantments for the armor to prevent that from happening, who knows. Pretty crazy, but that would be rather impressive. Or imagine you just put your hand on someone's chest and they fly away because you just released the combined force of 20 polearm strikes in one. Ow. That might be chest crushing. Okay, bear with me. This one is pretty far-fetched and that is not exactly a high-tech solution. This is just pure fantasy. But imagine you could allow a dead master swordsman to possess your entire suit of armor. So again, it would be head to toe, full suit, and the soul of the, the long gone swordsman 
could take over and move it for you. So you could be like the the worst noob, but you would still kick ass because you, you could just let them do the thing. You know, like imagine you have Lichtenauer in your armor or Meyer, you know, one of the, the great masters, Fiore, who suddenly fights for you. Um, I don't know why they would want to, maybe just, who knows, maybe being dead is really boring and they want a bit of a thrill. And yeah, I mean, you should definitely have an off switch for that because you wouldn't want that the soul of, of whoever could go around and hump a bunch of people for fun. That's not good. Not good for your reputation. What about lightning enchantment? Imagine every time the opponent hits your armor, they get electrocuted. That would be really handy, um, at least if enough of that is actually being transferred. Most swords have wooden handles. They would insulate quite a bit. I'm not even sure if that would transfer any electric shock at all, but some swords, like um, certain rapiers and small swords, have wire wraps around the handle. That could work, potentially. Um, what about a time enchantment, or air enchantment for that matter? Basically anything, any magic effect that slows down a weapon as it gets into proximity with your um, of your armor. So let's say it progressively slows it down the closer it gets. Like there's, there's gotta be a certain threshold, but then past that it gets slower and slower and slower. Even if they still hit you, which, you know, by that time being so slow it would be easy to avoid. But even if they still hit you, if it's that slow, it wouldn't harm you in any way. You know, if if you even if you have a massive war hammer and just go boop, doesn't do anything. Okay, before the video gets too long, let's do one more, which is again a pretty obvious one, which would be healing factor or self-repair, stuff like that, which could again also potentially be high-tech if, if you have nanites in the armor that automatically go to any damaged area and repair it, put it back together, and maybe put your flesh back together as well. Again, that would be rather handy. Perhaps also something that releases painkillers. You know, similar to Gordon Freeman's suit in Half-Life. Uh, that would be really useful. It would prevent you from being negatively impacted by the injury. I mean, with enough adrenaline, you probably are not going to feel a lot of injuries anyway. But if need be, it could monitor your nervous system, basically, and administer painkiller if needed, and, you know, send whatever, you know, healing magic or nanites to the damaged area and, and knit it back together. So, yeah, wouldn't, probably wouldn't work if a limb is severed, but then you have kind of crappy armor anyway, if that happens. So the armor of restoration, basically, because if it can protect you, then it can at least fix you. That sounds like some odd failure, like the armor is, is all self-conscious because I'm sorry dude, I couldn't really protect you, but I'll make it better here, I'll put some bomb on it. Anyway, uh, let's leave it at that, so hope you found it entertaining, and thanks for watching folks. Also check out the video description, there's going to be a bunch of links to a bunch of things that uh, you may be interested in, that help out the channel, etc, and so forth, blah blah. Have a good one. Oh my god, this is so hot. I gotta get out of this thing.